Hi, everybody. This is a podcast where real doctors discuss fake medical emergencies. That means that unless in 1998 The Undertaker threw you off Hell in a Cell and you plummeted 16 feet through an announcer's table, this podcast is not medical advice. If you need medical advice or medical care, please contact your doctor. Hi, everybody. I'm Jackson Bain. I'm Johnny Kolosinski. You might remember me from such podcasts as um, uh, my brain is broken because of all of this and I don't even have a joke. Uh, oh, God. <laughs> this is, uh, hi, everybody, a bad uh, medicine podcast coming to you live on tape once again from social isolation. Yep. Uh, we've been gone for a little bit. Been a lot of stuff popping up in yeah. both our worlds, I would say. Been yeah. pretty like nuts, I think, in general. Yeah. Um, it, it, it's definitely been a, a crazy time for pretty much everyone. Uh, oh, yeah. So what we're going to do now is we're going to have an episode that's not about COVID. Uh, this is a exactly. podcast, if this is your first time listening, uh, where we talk about what Hollywood gets right and wrong about medicine and how the body works. Uh, you can find us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at HiEverybodyMD or at HiEverybodyMD.com. Or you can give us a call. Or- at five three zero doctor b and what does the what b stand the b? for jackson i would say it's going to be battle of the tough guys because this week we're going to be talking about no Holt bard uh a 1989 movie starring hulk hogan yeah uh we're going to talk about what hollywood hogan gets right and wrong about medicine this wasn't Hollywood Hogan yet. This yeah. is still WWF Hogan. And the reason why I picked it is WrestleMania just finished. So I'm like, yep. let's just watch a horrible movie written by Vince McMahon and Hulk Hogan. Over the course of a weekend. Because they didn't like the first script? Yeah, because the first script was too bad, which I really need to read that script because holy God. This movie is bad in all the best way possible. Yeah. And this is what we needed in our life. And I think a lot of this movie, bad medicine wise, is unrealistic violence. Um, mm-hmm. And just, I, I don't understand how this, this whole entire world works. Um, yeah. Let's, <laughs> so I have multiple notes uh-huh. and none of them are about medicine. But there's something, That's all right. there, there's something that I think I want to talk about before we get started on, okay. on, on talking about the plot of the movie. And that uh, is kayfabe. Okay. Uh, so Jackson, what is kayfabe? So kayfabe is kind of presenting, I think the best way to describe it is, it's still real to me, damn it. Yeah. As in everything that is portrayed in staged events um, in wrestling that's scripted is portrayed as real. So sometimes they'll live uh, their life as the character. So um, Hulk Hogan will be this kind of big bigger than life person telling people to eat their vegetables and take their vitamins and whatnot and that's his persona and that is to perceive that is perceived as true and that is who he is mm-hmm. um sometimes it could be that um like Rand, if you want to do old school wwf randy savage and miss elizabeth his wife per- initially portrayed as characters ended up really getting married but they blended real life with the staged events right uh so that's and, kayfabe yeah and wrestling's gotten a little bit away from that since uh i don't know maybe the early <clears throat> 2000s but part uh, of it's still kind of there you yeah. know like the undertaker is still this dead mysterious guy with supernatural power right so uh it's but, but 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 the the idea that they have to be 100 percent on and not let the audience in on the joke has kind of gone away a little bit a little bit in the age in the age of the internet where everyone knows about backstage news and drama and all that stuff Mm -hmm. that stuff um you kind of lose a little bit of that magic but when they kind of sneak the kayfabe in and make a storyline feel real is always like the thing that hooks a lot of people in right because it makes it it's something to latch onto and it definitely connects you to it right and um I mean, it's one of the I know things we're not made, a wrestling. Yeah, we're not well, not a wrestling podcast yet. But I will talk about it all day long if we yeah. need to. But yes, uh, I I think that that the a little bit more we're letting people in on what's act, what it's actually like behind the scenes is one of the reasons that divas started doing so well. Uh, um, divas, 
meaning divas, the not the women show. Wrestlers. divas meaning the women wrestlers not not divas being the show um mm-hmm. but when they you know acknowledge when they started treating them as athletes and not eye candy correct yeah and that was like a big thing where the girls were only getting 30 second matches and mm-hmm. they wanted more time giving them a chance that hashtag trended um and now it's m- pretty much their most popular wrestler, at least in the WWF, is a woman. Mm-hmm. And she's probably the biggest like merchandise seller of everybody. So things have changed quite a bit, but kind of opening up that window into seeing what was going on backstage definitely kind of snowballed into this bigger thing, be it kayfabe or actual like things going on in real society, kind of blending those two together, making this feel more real than it is. Right. Uh, but that's not my yep. So um, let's just just a quick rehash of the plot of 1989's um, No Holds Barred. Hulk Hogan is playing a guy who is absolutely not Hulk Hogan, but happens named Rip, to be named Rip um, that happens to be the WWF World Cha- uh, Champion, and yep. then an evil network TV exec uh, wants to start his his own uh, um, promotion his own wrestling league, uh, the battle of the tough guys. And so yes. he gets um, racism a- 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 as his, as his lead. Um, Zeus. Yeah. Zeus himself. Yeah. It's Zeus, the uh, guy who showed up in a prison uniform, uh, having just gotten out from killing a guy in the ring uh, and is a gigantic black dude who doesn't speak. It's Tiny Lister. It's Big Tiny Snake. Lister. Come on. Yep. He, he's there. Mm-hmm. But um, can I go back to one thing? Like, just going back to the opening scene, the sleeper hold is something I always have to explain to people. Mm-hmm. Um, in your understanding of the sleeper hold, how, do, how does it work? Do you know? Uh, kayfabe wise. K- kayfabe wise, I think think it's going to be shutting off uh shutting off ox- like cutting off your windpipe right is what they're, so, they're selling it as so actually they sell it as well close to that it's lowering or cutting off the oxygen to the brain was back in the day mm-hmm. now it's cutting off the blood supply to the brain okay there's a big there's a subtle reason for that change now too um wwe is trying to avoid a lot of like choking and suffocation kind of things ever since like the the tragedy of chris benoit Mm -hmm. which was when he like hung himself and like hung his kids and killed him and a bunch of stuff like that so now it's you cut the blood supply to the brain which makes absolutely no sense at all because it is is, and that would be supposedly by cutting off the carotid artery artery right yeah and you can actually I mean, you can try to cut off that blood supply to the brain, but you'll probably stroke and die. I mean, it's kind of like any kind of injury to the carotid. You can tear it, and then you can form clots there, and it might kill them later. Um, But the other thing you can do by rubbing on the carotid artery is actually lower your blood pressure and get you that way, too. Okay. So actually explaining it that way, like, oh, he's got pressure on the carotid. It's going to affect him. It's going to make him pass out because he's going to lower his blood pressure or whatever. Sure, why not? But that was always one thing I grew up watching everyone put in the uh, sleeper hold. And they don't get choked out right away or struggle. It's just this gentle good night into uh, tapping out or not so much tapping out anymore. Back then it wasn't tapping out. It was they would raise the arm and watch it drop. But then if you're the good guy, by by the third time they lift your arm, you stop it before it hits the ground. That's, that was the explanation of the sleeper hold back then. So it was always a funny thing to watch. Um, I think the only successful sleeper hold move was the million dollar dream where they didn't even do that part. They just let them go limp. <laughs> that was the only time. And then the million dollar man would stuff money in your mouth because <laughs> he's the million dollar man. Because wrestling. But yeah. And then I'm trying to think what else. But the CEO, as you were mentioning earlier, super evil guy. Yeah. Um, I think he. I think you successfully said on the Twitter that he was more evil and smarmy than Vince McMahon. Yeah, uh, I think that Kurt Fuller deserves an Oscar for managing to play somebody who makes Vince McMahon look like a shining beacon of hope. Yeah, he's also extremely strong. Like he's he's yeah. into crystals a lot. 
He's able to <laughs> smash all those crystals. No blood, nothing like that. Just crushes it in his hand and just smashes it, which proves that he is stronger than like you know any kind yeah. of crystals that would save his life. But I don't know if you, what else you had on there. I have so many stupid notes about fights because there's so many bad fights in here. Yeah, all of my um, notes, like I said, are are non medical. They are things mm-hmm. like uh, uh, wrestling is counterculture in the eight, in the nineties versus today. Uh, they, they, I I really enjoy. It. So as they're getting started, they uh-huh. take uh, they take the network execs into this underground wrestling, um, literally underground wrestling ring. Uh-huh. Uh, in the seediest, diviest bar in the world, filled with yeah. you know, um, stereotypical rednecks, and that's kind of the idea that that was the audience for wrestling for a long time. Yeah, and I feel uh, like it's gotten away from that a little bit. A little bit. I think the weird thing about that whole underground bar fight situation was mainly the waitress. I don't know if you remember her. But she had the most phlegm I've yeah. ever heard of anybody in any movie. And I don't know why they had to portray that at all. Like, she should be coughing a lot more. If you have that much phlegm, just just spit it out or cough it up. Yeah. She, and she was also the methiest. Oh, no, no. Yeah. She was not close to methiest. If you want methiest, watch uh, Tiger King. I, I've, I, I have avoided Tiger, Tiger King so far. Why? Why are you avoiding the greatest thing on television? <laughs> You need to watch that. Um, watching how methy some of the people's mouths are, it, it's a roller coaster. I will say that, and it is fantastic, and you should watch it. I can't really cover it on this podcast um, because it's not a lot of medical stuff, other than don't do meth. But not medical advice, that. but methical advice. Don't do meth. It is a hundred percent medical advice. Um, oh, there is one scene that I really want to talk to you about, and it's the kidnapping scene where this happens in the beginning of the movie where uh, Rip gets kidnapped by the limo driver. Yeah. And so he gets kidnapped by the limo driver. Uh, yeah. They And luckily his limo has what, I guess it's supposed to be bulletproof glass like or bulletproof like sheet metal slide ups. So he's not yeah. able to punch his way out of the, out of the limo. Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, after he, he does manage to punch his way out of the limo, uh essentially i'm he, sorry he doesn't punch his way out of the limo he explodes out of the limo through the top yeah and uh, you would exp- i will say the one thing that i complain about this movie and i wrote a bunch of times it's a complaint i have about almost every movie there's not enough blood no there's there was hardly any blood at all there's only like two instances of blood which we'll get to later but no blood at all in this one and he like exploded through the top with like a plume of smoke around him too yeah i mean this Uh, is a movie you gotta watch it um, (laughs) from from a biological standpoint uh what mechanism do we have to burst through things in puffs of smoke uh does does that come out of the pituitary gland or (laughs) i mean that would be more of an adrenal thing because it's adrenaline right Mm -hmm. but no um I will say no. That probably doesn't happen. Is the likeliness of you busting through a car a roof. limo, a car roof, let's put it that way, is as much as him picking up a guy solely by his hair up from the ground onto the top of the car. Yeah. And then, like, we're not a physics podcast. We talk about that all the time. But usually that's not enough to support the weight of lifting up someone. Mm-hmm. But also, like, later in the movie, Zeus does the same thing to some guy who's on the ground and rips out a, a chunk of his hair, but he doesn't go flying up in the air. No. Like, the strength between Zeus and Rip are so inconsistent. Like, I don't know who's stronger than who. Their, their powers fluctuate so much in this movie. Yeah. Um, uh, let's, but let's, let's, let's talk about the limo driver for a moment. I'll, I was going to say that, because that is my favorite scene in this entire movie, by uh, far. What's that smell? Well, let, let's let's paint a picture for the audience. <laughs> um, after Rip has handily destroyed everybody in um, that whole entourage, like, we agree that throwing, they're all dead, right? Oh yeah, they all got thrown through bulletproof glass, but the glass shattered like like candy. They're all dead. 
a hundred percent. Everyone's every single person's dead, which is probably why the limo driver is sitting there in such shock. Hulk Hogan pulls him out. I'm sorry, Rip pulls yeah. him out. Absolutely not Hulk this, Hogan. Hulk Hogan is the makes, actor. Rip is the he makes, he makes the dumbest face. Not I'm not talking about the limo driver. I'm talking about like like Rip. The dumbest, most intimidating face, and just ask, what's that smell? And the response is <clears throat> dookie, because dookie. the limo driver crapped his pants. I mean, you could see the stains on there and whatnot. Yeah. Like, like, that's, I don't understand that. Like, I would feel like he would urinate himself before he stools himself. Right. That just makes more sense. It's a lot easier. But I feel like they just really wanted to catch a guy say dookie on there. And I know... From the stories when you watch, like you hear about Vince McMahon, he loves poop and fart jokes. This is right up uh, Vince McMahon's alley. Maybe. And I'm trying to find. I'm trying to find the scene so I can just play how bad he says the word dookie because it's. I don't understand how it's there. It's Maybe so that was the, it, so Vince McMahon and Hulk Hogan spent 72 hours in a hotel room writing the movie. Because uh, it wasn't up to their standards. It's possible that the only change was that line was wee wee. Wee wee. And then, Oh, what's that? What's yeah, that? What's that smell? So, pee pee. And no, 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 that's not enough. No. What can we do? What can we do here? How can we fix it? Let's get some chocolate, put it on the guy's butt, make him yell dookie. And here's the thing Vince McMahon is not above pee jokes either because he made some guy pee uh, during an episode of Monday Night Raw. Well, there was also because he was too scared. Where where we had uh you know the the two bumbling network execs uh, oh my god uh oh my god. get they're peeing in a trough in that basement bar and uh they get scared and so turn to speak to each other and pee on each other's feet uh, this is the uh the caliber of film that we're dealing with here folks please watch it you'll if you want an escape from all that's going on. This is your escape. It's it's so dumb. Uh, uh, I'm going to make the most awkward transition to Zeus now being this very dominant champion mm -hmm. and him going on this terror of throat punching everybody and then um, doing the chops, yeah. the chops on the sides of the neck, which allegedly knocks people out or kills them. And I'm not sure which one. Um, I mean, if you go by the, the logic of the sleeper hold working in real life. He basically just chopped people in the carotid artery, cut off blood supply to the brain just long enough to knock them out. Got it. It's just like the Vulcan neck pinch. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's a more cross-eyed Vulcan neck pinch. Yeah. Do you know why? This is like a side piece of trivia, but do you know why Tiny Lister is uh, eyes are like that? I do not. So he actually was born blind in his right eye. Oh, so it's like me, only a little more developed. A little more developed. He just like, um, it didn't fully develop. He doesn't have like a retina in that eye. It's yeah. detached and deformed. So he yeah. was actually born blind in that eye. So that's why his eye is the way it is. And part so of it saying is saying I could be Zeus? You could be Zeus, but, here, but the difference is you need one eyebrow. Okay. And that one eyebrow under the right side should not go all the way across. Okay, I can and do also that. You should, have the, you should also have the letter Z. Uh, shaved into your head. I can shave it in sorry. the back of my head. I'm sorry, not shaved into your head. Your head should be shaved only leaving the letters yeah. in your head. I can do this. I, 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 this I, I, I'll be honest, my hairline is a little more suited to Hulk Hogan. Current Hulk Hogan? Yeah, any Hulk Hogan. I, I, if I, I think I could grow out Hulk's... And my wife and I were talking about this just after we finished watching it. I think I could grow out Hulk Hogan's mullet. Oh, I feel bad for your wife having to watch through this whole movie. Oh, she only watched the last <laughs> Oh, that's only half you need. That's like, that's when it gets real good. I, I don't know. I, I, I thought the whole film was delightful. Oh, my God. Um, Zeus goes on this whole tear. Uh, he rips out a clump of hair. Um, I wrote a weird note where I said, it's nice that a man named Lugwrench can find a job that fits with his name. Yeah. <laughs> but he, he puts the neck, like... He does this a lot with a lot of fighters is he'll put a pole on their neck mm -hmm. and then just hit them or kick them somewhere else. And that act in itself can technically kill someone. Because they, they've got the pressure on their, on their larynx yeah. and then. Yeah. 
and it doesn't kill them right away it it'll be like the airway edema later that'll kill you like that's that's the big concern with choking victims and whatnot is mm -hmm. not so much the initial effect but if you take a direct blow there it's the edema later that swells up and that's what can cause you to like die like mm -hmm. you get a hoarse voice and they look like hell oh i'm playing the movie in the background and i really regret it because i'm on the scene where hulk hogan is with samantha in the hotel room and he's just wearing yeah. the shortest shorts showing off his buns i yeah. late ladies <laughs> it, yeah it, it's that, that that was i feel like that wasn't so this movie was 89 but i feel like that was more like an 86 87 thing of you can be as masculine as possible by wearing the shortest shorts in history the shortest shorts and then he does like sit-ups yeah oh, sorry uh push-ups yeah push-ups push -up. off the bed Oh God, it was that that scene was uncomfortable for me. Yeah, it was a little a little me too y, just a touch. Yeah, a little bit. Um, oh, the diner fight. The diner fight. Let's let's uh, yeah, number one. Let's let's keep playing into racial stereotypes just a little bit. Uh, okay. In the in this film, like I I felt like that was just kind of across the board where this movie oh, yeah. was going um i and uh what it, it, it wasn't it was uh just just two 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 bumbling thieves that showed up <laughs> yeah. uh and hulk i'm sorry rip fought them off uh by destroying the restaurant throwing the bolted down benches on them and then throwing the same pie at them five times yes he, i wrote he subdued robbers with dessert yeah but he also slid the guy down the entire diner table with yeah, the tiniest like the counter. Throw. Yep. Oh, can we talk about how glistening everyone is all the time too? Oh, yeah. Because he was glistening. He 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 glowed. <laughs> um, there's, there's no reason for this. I, my, my favorite part of all this was that so you got two two guys who are holding up a, a diner. Mm -hmm. They're gonna get a couple grand. I guarantee you, Hulk Hogan did like fifteen thousand dollars worth of property. I'm sorry, Rip, uh, Rip the Ripper did fifteen thousand dollars worth of property damage to that diner. Oh yeah, but it's it's him. It's fine. He's our yeah. favorite customer. Yeah. I, he didn't reckon like I mean the waiter or no cut that. I was gonna make a room joke. That's not gonna uh. work. <laughs> <laughs> um. And then we're slowly building up to the the climax of the movie, where right. this is where I had most of the medical problems in it. Uh, but and that's the, where uh, Randy, the little brother. Yeah, getting yeah close to that part. But there was one scene just before it where Rip catches someone trying to assault Sam, which is his love interest, and mm -hmm. then just leaves her there after she was being assaulted, and then chases him with his motorcycle, uh, trying to straight up murder him. Yeah. It's, it made no. It made no sense. Like he ran into him, and then he got caught, the assailant was caught on the motorcycle, and he gets launched into a tree. It was magic. <laughs> it was just magic. It was. But I will say this: he should be dead. Yeah, everyone in this film should be dead. Everyone multiple times should yeah. be dead in this movie, because like he that the guy who gets hit by the motorcycle. Physics makes sense that he would probably get caught, run over by the motorcycle, at least under the tires. Mm -hmm. There's no way he would have been launched into the tree. And if he did get launched in the tree, he would be a bloody mess. There's no one here in a bloody mess. Like this whole entire movie. No. It, it makes zero sense. I don't understand this. Like, I get it. This, this almost feels like a Coke, a Coke fueled script that was written by Vince McMahon and Hulk Hogan. In 72 hours in a hotel in Florida? Yes, a hundred percent. Wow, I know, I know. It sounds shocking, but that's coincidentally, this, mm -hmm. this was written in seventy-two hours by Vince McMahon and Hulk Hogan in a hotel room in Florida. Uh, I wonder if they had cocaine. Uh, I don't know. It's the eighties. Also, this movie initially was like, it was all funded by Vince McMahon. Yeah. So, this is all an attempt to make Hulk Hogan this huge, huge he, star, and yeah, and legitimize wrestling as entertainment. Uh, which took another 20 years. It, uh, it's this, oh my God, this movie. It's, 
it's so beautiful, but so terrible. <laughs> yeah. but this this was a couple years after um, Andy Kaufman died, right? Andy Kaufman died in like 85 or 86. I think so. Let me yeah. Uh, because just uh, the... 84. Yeah. Um, Andy kind of did the same thing to wrestling of... Yeah, he brought it. He played into kayfabe. Yeah, he brought it into mainstream. He like was on talk shows, um, kind of talking it up and whatnot, fighting women because he was mm-hmm. an intergender champion, and he was just this like cringe kind of humoring kind of person that brought it into mainstream a lot more. Yeah, and made these small promotions down in the south much more relevant. Mm-hmm. Ma- mainly Memphis, that's right. where it kind of got really big. But yeah, this this was trying to just make it more mainstream. And that was kind of the goal of all the WrestleManias, really. They tried to get in, like, mainstream celebrities to kind of validate the sports. Like, Cindy Lauper shows up. Donald Trump. I think Donald Trump showed up. Uh, Mr. T, Mike Tyson. Mr. Mm-hmm. T was part of the main event, I think, in the first or second WrestleMania. So, like, it's really random stuff like that to legitimize what's going on. And now it's like, Except for this year's WrestleMania. Every other WrestleMania was like a celebrity filled kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. But I digress because we're talking about no holds barred and the most no holds barredness of this whole thing was Zeus continuing his reign of terror, choking people at bars. But then at the end of one of the fights or during one of the fights, you see Rip's brother, Randy, and his friend watching Zeus fight. Mm-hmm. and then uh they run into zeus uh after the fight and he says something randy says something to zeus makes zeus angry and then prowl the evil ceo shows up and backhands um backhand, backhands randy. randy into a coma no he backhands him and actually draws blood He's oh the only right, right, right draw blood at this point he's bleeding from his mouth and then zeus hits him no blood comes out, but that's what sends him into a coma. So if we go by this logic that the only person that's drawn blood is Prell. He's got this Zeus. universe. He is the strongest person in this entire movie. He's stronger yeah. than Rip. He's stronger than everyone by far. And it was like, I don't know if he legitimately hit him or not, because that amount of blood that it looked like he busted his lip looked real. <laughs> I do know that uh, just from IMDb that uh, oh. Tiny uh, uh, Tiny's uh, nose got broken, so there were real injuries, which is just like wrestling, yeah. in general, right? Like Tiny Lister did become a real wrestler for a little while too. Yep. It's also confusing to me, but going back to that, Randy ends up in the ICU, and I I know we've gone through a lot of this before, but what did you think of that scene? There were no monitors whatsoever, and there was also no medicine whatsoever yeah and for someone in a coma you would think it would try to support his breathing or whatnot yeah nope nope but randy does uh i guess he was like prince charming he like kisses sorry not randy rip Mm -hmm. rip was like prince charming kisses randy on the hand and he wakes up from the coma yep and moves his hand and then starts doing physical therapy and things like that you know, yeah, I don't understand. I don't understand the lowering them into a tub for recovery. I was wondering like, I, about that. That was that was probably my only note that had anything to do with medicine. Is is why were they putting him in a tub? I don't know. Recovery? I put Starship Troop. I put Starship Troopers question mark. <laughs> um, I don't know. I mean, the only thing I can think of is it, it, it could technically be low resistance exercise. Yeah, right. Because that's what they do that, with fat dogs. Yeah, but the problem was right after that, they showed him trying to walk on the bars. Like every single rehab movie of the 80s, is uh-huh. they all have the parallel bars and they use that to brace themselves up to walk. And they have him walking there and he's moving his legs. And this is an important key to remember because he is moving his legs and, and supporting his arms himself with his arms. And some, correct. But when they go into the big fight between Rip and Zeus, he's sitting in the, the wheelchair completely motionless. Yeah. And, and, As if he's paralyzed. and Rip is inspired by the fact that he moves his fingers. 
Yeah, but even before that, like, Rip's walking in, like, kind of somber because he has to fight and he's worried that his girlfriend got kidnapped and whatnot. But he flashes the Ripper sign to his brother who always returns it, and his brother didn't have the goddamn decency to give it back to him. <laughs> he just sits there and looks at him. Damn it, Randy. The whole time. The strength is so cons- inconsistent. Like, I yeah. don't know if he's paralyzed or not. And yeah, I, I loved when when Sam, the girlfriend, got kidnapped, and he was just screaming, "What's happening? What's happening? What's happening?" Because he was in a wheel, he was in his wheelchair, and and couldn't turn around. And couldn't turn around, and they thought that that was, you know, oh, let's <clears throat> focus on this for high drama. Yeah, and then the only thing that really causes Rip to Hulk out, which I think that's the appropriate term here. Yeah, um, it's like as you mentioned, he moves his pinky. How do you see that from where you are with? what's yeah. going on he we, moves his pinky and he goes nuts yep it was so weird it made no sense at all also what makes no sense is um if you watch this again which it's gonna be hard for me to watch it again he has a bruise on his face from the time he got punched by uh zeus like and it's still there but as the scene progresses the bruise fades yeah it just gets lighter and lighter over the 15 minutes of the fight. Right. The whole time. Um, this, this movie is, I don't get it. It's so crazy. I don't have anything specific about that fight. Do you? Like of the? I do. Okay. Um, I mean, there wasn't, so to be fair, the fight didn't have that much in it. Mm-hmm. Um, Cause it was just a, a piss poor wrestler hitting another not as great wrestler. Um, <laughs> And a lot of hitting, but when the scene starts building up, and then um, so this is the only time, the only other two times you'll see blood in this movie is uh, Hulk Hogan, sorry, Rip fights Zeus up the stairs onto the stage and hits him, and then eventually hits him so hard that he falls off of the stage and into the ring. Right. And he falls so hard, he makes a perfectly round, a perfectly circular in, hole in the ring. Yep. And this is when you see the the second instance of blood in this entire movie, because he has a tiny amount of drool going down the side of his mouth. Right. So is Zeus dead? If, well, I didn't think so initially until Prel Prel gets electrocuted. Right. Because Prel's throwing this huge like temper tantrum. And destroying all the video equipment. Because he's the strongest man in the world. Prowl's yeah, uh, destroying, destroying the room. Prowl's destroying the room. I don't understand why. This is his broadcast, right? Like, right. he wants to show this high drama. Like, okay, I get yeah. it. His champion is going to lose. But he's destroying everything. Sparks are flying. You would think someone reasonable would leave, but he's not. And he pulls one particular thing with... I don't even know what it is because I don't. I'm not a big '80s technology person. Not, 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 not big on '80s broadcast television technology. No, unfortunately. Uh, but he pulls off one thing. <laughs> uh, the new one? No, There's good. a new one. Yeah, they remade it. I or, didn't know that. Like a season. Yeah, it's on CBS. Yeah. I know. Me and my random knowledge, but they pull it, and then they there's one exposed cable. He backs up into it because he's so mad. And he just like shakes and convulses just a little bit. And then he lands on the ground with his eyes open. And that's when you see a, um, him drooling blood. Yeah. So drooling blood equals death. So I, right. think, I think Rip is a straight up murderer. And he and murdered someone. the audience someone. cheers. The audience loves it. The very nicely dressed audience. Yes. Yeah. So yeah. Someone drooling blood is dead. Yeah. And, and he killed someone straight up on TV. Right. Uh, well, not on TV because he was. Oh, talking. sorry. He killed it in front of dozens of witnesses. Yeah. Yeah. Like a room full of witnesses that, that just loved it. It was the time of their lives. Yeah. And my final note that I wrote down on this was and now Randy can stand. Yeah. Because he's a. Oh, Randy's the worst. I think if I've learned anything, Randy lives in Hulk Hogan's house, mooches off of him. Sorry, mm-hmm. lives in Rip's house. Mooches off of him completely, and then does nothing to help. Yeah, yeah. This whole movie is unrealistic, like violency kind of thing. Like even hokier than wrestling, and wrestling's pretty hokey, like professional wrestling. This is way hokier than that. Right. Oh yeah. 
it, it was it was peak 80s in plot and oh just this is what level. this is what i wanted in life <laughs> but right now this is like this is exactly what i needed in a movie it's just really bad makes no sense violence and oh going back to the electrocution he should look way worse if he really did look crispier crispier bloodier eyes burstier you know i don't know what this movie was initially rated um but definitely not a nice way to go like I, it's an electric it's an electrocution because it's an electric execution like it's supposed to be bad right we've we've yeah. seen the green mile we know oh, yeah. what it should look like. Yes, this is a crispy uh, situation. Yeah. I think it's the nicest way to say it. I, yeah. It's possible that, that the censors didn't make it through the movie. It's true. This movie was no holds barred. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and I this, an, it, sorry, before that, this did influence a real WWE pay-per-view where it was Hulk Hogan and Brutus the Barber Beefcake fighting Randy Savage and Zeus in a steel cage. Right. Oh. And that that pay-per-view was called? No Holds Barred, the match, the movie. Yeah. <laughs> so it just rolls off the tongue. <laughs> oh, I love it. I love everything about this stupid movie. Dude, what's what's yeah. the, the new show that's on Disney right now? High School Musical, the movie, the show? I think I think that's what something it's along those High lines. School. Yeah, this is essentially the same thing. This this did it first. Yeah, yeah. High School Musical the series. High School Musical the series. Terrible. Terrible. Uh, well, Terrible. from what I hear, it's actually pretty great because it's it's not a a show about High School Musical. It's a show about kids putting on High School Musical. I'm gonna hard pass on that. All right, you might not be the audience. Um, no, definitely not. You know what you are the the audience for? What? The human centipede. Oh, okay. Speaking of which, I have an important question. Okay. The human centipede bills itself as 100% medically accurate. Uh-huh. If that's the case, how medically accurate is 1989's No Holds Bar, starring Hulk Hogan as probably not Hulk Hogan? <laughs> It's not. It's so not. Oh my god. It's it's um I can't even I don't even know what number to give it. I don't again, I we need to go back through our archives and yeah. really rank all this stuff so I can get an idea of where the hell we stand. But ugh. let's talk about some things that they did right. Hulk Hogan exists. Wrestling is a thing. Yeah. Um television's real. Yeah, but that's not all medically accurate. That's just life. Okay. I'm watching. I'm watching the rehab scene, trying to figure out if there's anything positive in this, and there is absolutely nothing, <laughs> like at all. Just watching. Our lowest like, so far has been Lucy with ten percent. It's 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 Lucy level. I mean, here's the problem: Lucy perpetuates a false misconception that has been a re per, like permeating society for like forever right like mm -hmm. using 10 percent of your brain everyone believes it even though it's not true people don't believe wrestling's real which is a fact mm -hmm. um i don't know it's probably like i'd say it's it, it's oh god is it more than lucy uh it's about the same as lucy I'll say okay uh, I'd say wow so. it's bad it's medically wise it's bad like if you got electrocuted you don't have one dribble of drool of blood going down your mouth if you fell off of a, a scaffolding i guess into a ring i guess you could have a tiny drip of blood if you bit your tongue wrong or cut your lip but it wouldn't drool perfectly down the side of your mouth and so many people probably should be dead in this movie let's be honest <laughs> Like when he fought, when Zeus fought Lugwrench in the metal foundry and he fell on the ground and was smoking, he should have been sizzling and dead at that point too. Like there's so many dead people in this movie. The body count is quite high and it didn't ring true. Yeah. So in that way, it's just as bad as Lucy. I will say it's as medically accurate as Lucy. I, you know what? No. 
give it a nine. I'll say Oof. nine. <laughs> Just Oof. nine. It's nine percent. Like, come on, because the only reason why is I'm watching Randy right on the screen right now, and his stupid face and his paralyzed badness. Yeah, it's bad. <laughs> Randy with his stupid face and his paralyzed badness is the title of this episode. I'm fine with that. If you so be it, it's so stupid. Everything's like, who's Randy? Watch the movie. That's how you figure it out. But yeah, that was, was bad. Uh, is, is, is there anything they did right? Yeah. Is, is anything, I don't know of, of anything that is salvageable from this movie other than uh, Colt, Kurt Fuller. Being, being yeah. the smarmiest Yeah, it, it being so mustache twirlingly evil that that's really it, it. Yeah. Honestly, that might be the only thing that I like. The rest of it is so over the top. No one should be back listening the entire movie. <laughs> um, it's true. It's weird. It's super, super weird. Um, and then everyone, no one has decency in this entire movie. Except for Rip. No, uh, not. wants to talk no. about his charity work. And that's what made him fall, or uh, made Samantha fall in love with him? Yep. I thought it was because she got a glimpse at his buttons. That, that could have been, it could have been a little bit of column A, a little bit of column B. No, no one, no one is redeemable in this movie at all. I, I don't think so. Like, think about it. Who is someone you can root for in this entire movie? No one. No, log wrench. I mean, he was a hardworking man trying to make money yeah. for his family, and then got beaten up by uh, Zeus. I guess it's only one. Yeah, it's, it's, it's really the tragedy of lo- of log wrench. It is. It is a tragedy of log wrench. But that being said, if you want a really stupid movie to watch during during all of this stuff, that was you it. got time. Oh, you got time. You're not going anywhere. Yeah. But you better, you shouldn't be going anywhere, I guess. Is a yeah. Better Stay question. home, listen to podcasts. Yeah. Tell them about your friends TV. on Zoom. Yep. And then if you do listen to us and you haven't done it already, please rate us on the Apple Podcasts. Yeah. And leave us a rating, share us, tell your friends. Um, yep. Yeah. Uh, we'll uh, obviously, things are up in the air. We'll be as consistent as we can with new episodes. Uh, I yep. think we're going to probably stick with the avoiding. Uh, a, a, a avoiding plague-based episodes for, for just for a little bit weeks. Yeah, uh, yeah. Okay, uh, that's it. That, a- anything else we want to add about about no, no. hold barred? No, right. I'm good. <laughs> right. Well, thank you, Jackson, and uh, uh-huh. hopefully, I will see you again someday in the future. Yeah, uh, despite the fact that we're two and a half miles from each other. Exactly. Ridiculous. Yeah. All right. Okay. Uh, Talk to you later, folks. Talk to you later as well. Bye, everybody. Bye-bye.